Okay guys, so quick video on setting up the total station, basic concepts. Um, so, you know, a total station is a, they're also called a pulse laser station because it sends out a pulse laser. And pul the laser, you know, moves at the speed of light. We know that's a, that's a constant. Um, and so the time the, the, the laser leaves the station, bounces back off the prism or the target and back to the um, back to the station, we can calculate distance from that. The total station does that, so you get your distance um, from uh, the, the location of the total station to the point is one part of the uh, measurement that we need. The other part of the measurement we need is the um, the vertical angle like this relative to horizontal as our zero. So this would be plus ninety negative 90 so vertical angle and the other thing we need to map in three dimensions is the horizontal angle this way right so um so i'm going to show you how to set up the toll station um, and, the, and the principles as we go through it so the first thing obviously is we need to set up the, the tripod um, over a datum point we know where the datum point is at the site um, the datum point can be either arbitrary um, coordinates or absolute coordinates in some kind of global coordinate system. If you give it arbitrary coordinates, usually you want to give it values like 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, um, so that you can point the station in any direction and you're probably not going to get, neg you're not going to get negative values unless you're shooting over 1,000 meters, right? Um, uh, but in our case, we're, we're shooting to a, um, or we're setting up over a, um, a, a point that's been surveyed in with precise GPS, um, so we actually know the coordinates of that point. So the first thing we do is set up over the, the datum, which is a known point, um, and uh, that's our reference point for, um, for the site. And basically, you know, so think about setting up over the point. First, you have to think about the height that you want the toll station to be eventually. So I unscrew the legs, and a good rule of thumb is I, I just pull, Pull the legs up to about chin height because the toll station is going to be up here, right? So you want to be able to sort of see through the toll station and then and without bending over, stooping over, or standing on your tippy toes. So you just pull them all up, then you lock the legs. Pull them all up to chin height roughly and then lock the legs. And I'm just spreading the legs out over our point. Okay, and I'm going to unscrew the plate cover here. This is just a plastic cover that protects the plate. And um, it has little clips here. You can clip onto the, the leg there so that you don't lose your, your plate cover, which happens a lot. So I'm going to just roughly level the tripod over our point is the first step here. I roughly level and center it, okay? So there's a there's a hole in this triangular plate. This plate you can think of as like the ice skating rink for the total station that it floats on when we need to make more precise adjustments to, um, to the station over our, over our datum point. So I'm just looking down through the hole in the, um, in the screw that holds the total station in once we screw it down. So I'm just going to get it as close to over there, just eyeballing it as I can. It's a little bit more difficult outside, but not a lot. So I'm just kind of, basically, you, you can stand between two legs and get it, and get it in place. And I'm just sort of aiming like a gun sight down through this thing. Okay, that's that's pretty good. And roughly level. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, at each step. You know, I'm in the center here. I'm looking down through the center. At each step, you want to be as precise as possible um, because the, the more precise you are with each step, the easier the next step gets. Okay, so we're basically ready to take out the toll station. Um, and if you see Nikon, that means that the box is facing the correct way. The other side doesn't have a label. So that's the side that goes down. There's also an arrow here that says open with an arrow pointing up. And then these are like safeties on the box so that you can't mistakenly kick it open. So you flip those up and you open this and you open your toll station box. Put the battery on here for a second. Okay. Um, 
So handling this thing, when you take it out, you want to hold it with two hands, put it up on the, 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 the plate here, you line up the triangles, you know, you got your, your two triangles and you line them up. And the first thing you do is just um, screw it on. And I'm just going to screw it on and, and sort of snug, but not super tight. You don't need to go crazy and go super tight. It's actually bad to, to over tighten. Now I'm going to close the, the lid on the box so that no dust or rain gets in. Dust is our worst enemy with these things. So I just close it right away before I do anything more. Okay, so now we're going to make sure we're going to um, we're going to sort of. Uh, make sure we're somewhat level and still and somewhat over the point. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is look through this. Um, this is called the optical plummet. I'm going to look down through it and it looks straight down at the point. And I'm going to stand between two legs, right? I'm going to grab this nice and firm, look down through, pick it up, and get me over the point more precisely. Okay, pretty good. And now I'm gonna level with this um, level here, the, the spirit level it's called. Okay, so um, that's this little level with the circle in the middle. And remember, so the thing, the thing we're gonna do is a rough leveling with the legs of the tripod first. So that's the first stage of leveling here. And where the level, I'm sorry, where the bubble is high, that's the high side of, of the level. So you need, right now the, the bubble's here towards this leg. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower this leg a little bit. So if you see what I'm doing down here, I'm sort of holding this in place so it doesn't just slam down. And I'm, I'm letting out some of the uh, length of that leg. Okay, it's still, still high on this side a little bit. Now the bubble's over here, kind of in line with this leg on the opposite side. So I'm going to, and this is the high side, so I'm going to raise this side just to get it more or less in the center. So actually, Gabby, you can come around this way okay. too and see what I'm doing with the, the bubble. So I've got it relatively close. Let me see. This leg's kind of binding. Okay, that's pretty good. Now it's this way, which kind of is the, on the opposite side of this leg, so I'm going to raise this leg. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's a little bit this way, so I'm going to lower this one a tiny bit. And that'll get us. More or less centered. Okay. Okay. Now, like I say, you want to be as precise as possible at each step. So I'm really trying to get that centered so we don't have to compensate on the next step a lot. There we go. Now it's pretty much in the center. Okay. Sorry. Um, Okay, so now I'm just going to make sure we're still over the point. And we're a tiny bit off the, 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 the X and the point, so I'm just going to loosen this, loosen it just a little bit so that we free it up. And now we're going to use that ice skating rink. See how this moves? Okay, so I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get the, the little dot in the middle of the bullseye here inside the lens um, right on the center of the red X. And actually, here, I'll take that. I can, um, did you um, pause it or maybe oh, we're still going? Okay. So I'm going to actually see if we can get the camera to look down through there. See? Oh, yeah, you can see it. You want me to point it apart? See? Okay, so we're looking right. Right down, it's centered right on the red X. Okay, and we're level here. So now what we need to do is um, level with the second more precise level on the toll station, which is 
this level up here, which is, I think it's called the plate level, okay? And this is where it gets tricky. This is the part that's most complicated. It's more, it's most, uh, the, it's the most time consuming part of the process. So the way to think of this is you have uh, a triangle here with adjustable corners, right? Um, the tr this is called the tri-bach. So the, so the, um, the screws on, the, on these feet of the tri-bach um, allow it to float relative to this plate. So this, this, this is a separate sort of level from the level of the plate itself, okay? So, um, so what we need to do is, if you think about this as a plane, or as a, think of it as like a saucer or a plate, right? How, if you wanted to, if you had a plate floating in the air, um, you would want to, and you wanted to level it, you'd want to level it on one axis and then another axis at 90 degrees to it. Right? If you, if you leveled at, at these two angles, right, it could still be a little bit off, off level on, uh, on this plane, even though these two are level. So you need, you need it to be, you need to level at two axes at 90 degrees to each other. So you need to use two feet on one of these planes, and then you need to, um, so here's our bubble again, right? So. Here's our level here using these two screws, and then you would turn it 90 degrees. Now our bubble is like this, right? It's like this, and I would use the one foot over here up and down, okay? So, actually, let's go around this side, okay? And I'll show you a little mark over here. So we can use you can, you can actually use any two and then one, but on these two, there's an actual mark over here. So on the total station, there's a mark um, right here. You see that? Um, and uh, right there. Kind of hard to see, but it's above this um, is where you want to line this up. So here we'd be using these two feet, because here's our bubble up here, our bubble level is here. So this way and this way by adjusting this foot and this foot. Then we would turn the instrument 90 degrees, and there's a little um, arrow here to line up with this gap down here. There you go. And then we would use this foot up and down to level on this plane. So we're going two, one. Um, use the two feet this way, then the one foot this way, okay? <laughs> two feet this way, one foot this way, okay. So, all right, so here, why don't you come around here and kind of go over my shoulder. So, the trick to this is when you're using the two, right? When, you're line, when your bubble is aligned with two of the feet, then you want to turn the screws in opposite directions. If you turn them in the same direction, they're both going to be loosening or they're both going to be tightening and they're just going to go up and down the same amount. And you're not going to do anything in terms of leveling. So you need to turn one, um, you need to turn them in opposite directions, one inward and one outward sense right so I'm gonna move my thumbs either towards each other or away from each other but not in the same direction so and the other trick is your left thumb is going to um, dictate the direction of the of the bubble okay so right now the bubble is uh, in the level up here is this way we want it to go this way so I need to move my left thumb this way like this right so which means I need to take both of my hands and go this way. So I'm just gonna take out half of the air towards level. Right? I'm not gonna try to completely level it now. I'm gonna take out half of the distance between where it is and, the, and being level, roughly. I mean, that's, it's hard to know exactly what's halfway, but you get take about half the air out, then I turn it 90 degrees. Now the level is here, so I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna take out half the air to get it back to level. Half of the air to get it back to level. Okay, 
if I took it all the way to level in one fell swoop, it would actually throw the other axis further off of level. So you have to creep them back to level a bit at a time. And this is the reason why we're only taking half the air out. So resist the temptation to level it all at once. Um, okay, so I'm getting closer with each iteration here. Okay, so again, I'm still moving that bubble this way, so I'm, I'm just creeping my thumbs this way a tiny bit. They're both going towards the outside. Okay, and it's level on this axis, and it's probably going to end up being level on this axis after this adjustment because I've creeped them back to being level. So I'm just going back and forth on those two axes until it's, until it's level. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're almost level. We are level on both axes. Okay. So now, now what we want to do is make sure we're still looking, we're still directly over the point because if you think about what it's doing, now the station is truly level, and of course now the, the optical plummet is truly facing, is truly pointing directly straight down. And so now we need to make sure we're still over the point, and we're a tiny bit off, not a lot, just a tiny little bit. So I'm just loosening that and, slide, and skating it again, and now, I'm, and now I'm perfectly over that point again. Okay, so now I'm just going to double check. I shouldn't be off level too much, but I'm going to make a tiny little adjustment here to get us back to level. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. I should mention, I, here we're on a hard floor. Outside, what you want to do is, one of the first things you do is after you do the, the rough level with the tripod, you sink the feet in the ground, and then you adjust the, the lengths of the legs uh, for your spirit level, but uh, you don't need to do that here. But you know you really sink those feet in the ground because this thing is so sensitive and the horizontal um, angle and leveling that you it will settle over the course of just you know a, a short amount of time um, if you don't sink those feet in the ground. Okay, so now we're going to turn this thing on. There's a power button here, just a red power button. I'm just going to Hold it down a little bit, and it'll turn on. It says tilt telescope. It tells you the temperature that it's set at. That's the temperature that it assumes it is. That's not an actual thermometer. So, and the reason why it's doing that is it makes tiny little adjustments um, for calculating the distance measurement on the speed of the laser based on temperature. And the second thing here is pressure, barometric pressure. Um, the barometric pressure is fine for this elevation where we are in Nashville. I've set that up. Um, I actually went online, looked at the range of barometric pressure at this elevation, and we're at um, 29.5 inches of mercury. That's kind of a good ballpark figure for this elevation. Temperature set at 85 degrees. That's kind of a good average for this time of year anyway. Um, so that's close enough. But if we went to like really high altitude, we want to adjust this because there's like you know, a third less um, air at, at really high altitude in the Andes. Okay. So it says tilt telescope, which means it just wants you to break the plane of horizontal um, to sort of wake it up. Okay. So, um, so the keypads here are basically escape measure one, which is send the laser out to look f um, to shoot a point on a prism. Measure two, which is, we've got it set up right now as shoot reflectorless. In other words, it will send the laser out. It'll, the laser bounces back off of whatever you're pointing the machine at and will give you a distance directly from that surface. So you could point and shoot um, um, and outline a building or whatever it might be. Um, and then display and angle we don't use very much, so you don't really need to think about those. This is the mode that switches the keypad between numbers and letters. That's important to know, that little blue button. And the menu button up here is really important because that gives you access to different uh, menus. Um, and then it's alphanumeric keys, you know, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, zeros down here. And then each of those has letters and numbers, so this is like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, so it's like old school texting on a telephone. 
So switching between mode, you switch between numbers and letters on the input. And then each of these has a special function too, like this is station, which we use a lot. This is code, which we use a lot. Um, and this is HOT, which is height of target, which we use a lot um, to change the, the, the height of the target that we're aiming at. Um, we use it a fair bit anyway. So we need to, we need to um, orient the total station. So now it's level. Now we need to tell the total station where it is in the world in this absolute um, grid system, this um, uh, projected grid system that's the UTM grid, which is the Universal Transverse Mercator. Universal Transverse Mercator. We're in zone 16N, as I've talked about in class. You can go on Google Earth, turn the grid on, and switch it from latitude and longitude to UTM, and you'll see how those um, how the grid works. It's dividing the 360 degrees of the globe into six degree um, slices, and there's 60 of them around the world. So we're in zone 16 north of the equator, um, and so we're going to enter the coordinates for the datum in that UTM coordinate system using the station button. This is the station button up here. It's the number seven. We're already in, a, in the appropriate job. Um, if I wanted to change the job, I could go into menu up here and go to job and start a new job or something like that. But we're just using the same job all year. So I'm just going to go to the station button and tell it where it is in the world. Um, and so our options here are known. The really, the two you need to know about are known and resection. Known is when you're setting up over a known point, which we are. Um, and, then, um, and then the second step in this is, is pointing it to a second point so that it knows, um, it, so it can orient on the horizontal um, angle. Um, the second one is resection, so you, you can actually orient the station um, relative to two or three other points that are known, and then it will figure out where it is in the world. But most of the time we use known, we shoot in a data, and we, um, we then know the coordinates of that point. So we're going to tell it where it is. So we're going to use known. I'm just going to hit enter down here for known. And then you get this thing that says station. It's ST, which means station. It wants to know what point it's on, OK? So I'm going to actually. Um, enter a wild card here. Um, I'm going to switch this from um, numbers to letters and then I'm going to hit the asterisk key here which is sort of a wild card. It's like look for any anything. any um, Look for any character in the code field in, this, in the lookup job. So it's going to kind of perform a little query that's just wide open. Show me all the points that are available. And the first one that comes up is datum three, which is what we're using, datum three. So I'm going to select that. And briefly, the coordinates of datum three are going to pop up. Um, and that's fine. So OK. So um, now it wants to know. So anyway, now it knows it's on this point, or we just told it it's on this point. And it knows what those coordinates are. Now it wants to know how high it is over that point, right? So it needs to know the HI or the height of instrument. And right now it's just at 000. zero, zero. Um, and the reason why it needs to know that is so that it can, can subtract that value with every point. And that value changes every day depending on how high you set up this tripod that's gonna um, differ significantly between days, right? So what I would do here is literally put a tape measure down on the datum and measure up, up to here um, and keeping the, the, the tape measure as straight as possible, but there's always going to be a tiny little bit of an angle. It's not going to be straight vertical. So what I do is I measure to here, um, and, uh, and, uh, and I subtract like two millimeters um, from it um, to compensate for the slight bend in the, in the tape measure. It's just a convention. So I don't have a tape measure on me right now, so we're just going to enter um, 1.53. I mean, we're not taking real data today, so I'm going to enter 1.53, let's say 2, right? So that'd be 1 um, meter point, uh, that's uh, 53 um, centimeters um, and uh, 2 millimeters, right? So 1.532. Okay, you're going to have different values depending on how high you set it up. So now it wants to know, um, it needs to orient itself on the horizontal axis, 
right? So we've leveled the station already, and that gives us the vertical angle, right? Um, that's the second variable we need. It gets the distance from the speed of the laser. It gets the, the vertical angle from relative to zero on the, on the horizontal, and that get, ends up giving us the Z value, the elevation of the point that we're shooting relative to the datum. Um, and it knows where it is in the world in the sense of it knows what point it's over. But it still doesn't know the horizontal angle. It doesn't know where north is or where any angle on this axis is. There's no way to, for it to know that. Um, we don't put com compasses in these because, you know, I mean, a, a, a magnetic north is not true north. That's kind of not very useful for us. So we need a second point of known coordinates to cite to. Or we need, uh, uh, we need to, maybe we've, uh, on, on the computer, plotted a second point and uh, that we know is out there that we can cite to and calculated that angle on, on screen and enter that angle manually. But what we have is actually we've gone out and we've shot a second point that we um, know with precision what the coordinates are. And we're going to cite to that. And the, the options here, um, we're going to back cite to that. That's what that's called. To get the horizontal angle, you're going to back cite to it. So you, we can either cite to that point and enter and um, enter the coordinates of it, that or actually shoot the point. In other words, it sends out the laser and actually shoots the point. You've got somebody out there with the prism, or maybe you're shooting it directly with a prismless uh, point. Or you can just point the station to the point, cite, cite to the point, and then let the total station calculate the angle, which is the more common way of doing it. So we're going to use option two here, which is angle. So we're going to cite to the back site, and um, we're going to tell it what point that back site point is, and then we're going to um, it will calculate the angle for us. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. Um, on angle here and here it says BS for back sight so we need to look up in the job in the lookup job um, the point that is our back sight point so I'm going to switch again to letters and hit an asterisk and um, hit enter and I'm going to go to um, the vent northwest point which is the point we're using most commonly um, for the backside point. You guys have seen this. Um, the point is, th th at this stage of the game, you're, you're citing to a point that you have surveyed in that you know the coordinates of, okay? If you're in a, a remote area where you don't, you don't have, a, and you don't have a differential GPS, you don't have a precise GPS, you can also, like, cite to something really far away, like a, a pointy mountain peak, or a, it might be a radio tower, whatever it might be, something that's far in the distance, that you roughly know the coordinates of um, that you could then plot and um, on, on screen that you might see in a satellite image or something, get those coordinates, get them in the gun, and then it will calculate that angle when you sight to it. So there are lots of ways of setting up a horizontal angle point, and we just happen to set ours up with a differential GPS. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm selecting vent northwest, which is the northwest corner of that brick um, vent um, um, thing out there um, that covers the, the steam tunnel out there. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay, and there's the coordinates. It pops up. It wants to know the height of the target in case we're actually shooting the point. Even though we're not, we're just going to cite to it because all we want it to do is calculate the angle. So I'm just going to hit enter here. It says 1.6, but really it's irrelevant because we're not actually going to shoot the point. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter, and now it's saying cite, back cite, and hit measure or enter, right? So um, we are going to um, just hit enter because we don't want to use measure or else it'll send the laser out and, and try to shoot the point. We're just going to cite to it and then um, hit enter. So citing is um, you're going to look through the barrel of the above the, um, the station and you should see a little a white triangle. Let me back up a little bit. Go back. Yeah, there you can see. It. Yeah, there you can see that triangle. So what you want to do is like 
stare, it's like the barrel of the gun. See my finger? You want to sight to something so that the top of the white arrow is lined up with your what you're pointing to, right? So I actually first I and there's one there's one on both sides. So you can use the one on the bottom too and sight and it will point down and you you line up the bottom of the point uh, uh, to what you're looking at. Okay, and let's say I've I've sighted like I'm sighting down a gun right now. I'm I'm sighting to the point and let's just pretend that I'm sighting to my back sight point. Then I would um, so if I sight to the point roughly like that, then I lock down this plate and I lock down this plate. So a little bit on the plate. So this is your horizontal angle plate lock. All right? If you loosen this little lock right here, it will float freely. When I lock it down, then I can fine tune it by looking through here and it's, it's, it's turning about this axis ever so slightly now when I turn this, okay? really slightly. Sometimes you'll reach the end of the, of the threads inside there, and if that happens, just open up this lock and turn it in the opposite direction for a while so that you have room for um, adjustment again. Just, and these locks, you don't need to lock down tight, just, just enough so that this grabs onto it. Okay? So then um, this, this governs your vertical axis up here, okay? so your vertical angle here. So let's just pretend that I'm sighting to my point and I'm going to adjust the horizontal angle, adjust the horizontal angle. I might have to focus. This is the focus, just like on a binocular. So this big ring here you focus, and then this little ring right here focuses the actual crosshairs inside the lens. Okay, so this is your, um, this is your subject focus, and this is your object, obje I think this is called the objective focus. Want to show the yeah. cross? Um, I don't know if we'll actually be able to focus on something. Let me see what's... Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll show you guys what we're looking at. See, the, there's the crosshairs, which you can kind of see it's a little bit overexposed. This guy. Tricky. Let me get the lens. There we go. You can see it. Okay. So that's what you're looking at. So you're going to line up especially the vertical crosshair when you're trying to do the horizontal angle, right? Um, because that's going to, you really want to line up that vertical angle with, with what you're pointing at, um, at this step. Okay, so that sets the horizontal angle for all subsequent um, shots on the total station for this session, right? So, okay, I'm pointing at the point and it says sight back sight and hit measure or enter, which we, we've sighted already, so I'm just going to hit enter. All right, so that's all it needs. So now it knows where it is in the world. It knows the vertical axis uh, angle because of we've, we've uh, leveled it very precisely. And it knows the horizontal angle because we just cited to a second point uh, uh, with known coordinates and it, it, it uh, calculates the angle between those two points. So now we're ready to shoot points and so you just loosen the, um, loosen the plate locks and I always, tend to handle it with one hand and you can you know you can rotate it about this axis uh, and move this up and down um, freely um, and and you sight you first you sight to what you're shooting you might be shooting somebody with a prism so you sight to that prism um, you, you you would sight up to the sight up uh, sight to the prism roughly and then lock it down look through Rotate your axes until you're precisely in the middle of the prism. Then you would hit measure one, and you're good to go. Okay. So these are the basics um, in terms of setting it up. And the most time-consuming part is, is is leveling, and then um, and then you're off and running. Really. Um, and once once it's time to shoot points, you use measure one to actually shoot the point. 
The other thing that we have to constantly uh, be aware of is the code that's going to be associated with each point. So I'll hit this code button here, um, and that's where you can enter a different code value. Like you would put for locus, we would do like L dash for locus, L dash, let's say 1001, right? So it'd be L dash 1001. Let's say, um, uh, so I'd, I'd change this, or I'd, I can, I can uh, put that in. So I'm going to hit L dash, or actually, let me see here, yeah. I'm going to do L dash. 1001, whoops, 1001, okay, and I hit enter. So for th this point that I'm going to shoot and all subsequent points until I change that code again will have that same code, okay? So there's a point column in the table that this thing um, produces. The point column is just point, point numbers from one to infinity, let's say. The code is like the information that we have that tells us what it actually is, right? So it might be locus 1001, and it might be points. It's starting here at point 39. So locus 1001 might run from point 39 to point 52, let's say, right? So when you're shooting, you need to make sure that you're, you're outlining the locus in one direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Usually clockwise is a good way to start. To, to, to map. What you don't want to do is go crisscrossing across the locus because then it makes it much harder to trace afterwards. You don't know what to connect with what. So only go around the outside of the locus or whatever you're mapping in one direction. Don't go back and forth across it. You only go around this way or around this way. That way you know um, look, uh, in this case, point 52 will close with point 39. The last point that you shot on, will, will um, close with the first point that you shot for locus 1001. After you're done with locus 1001, when it comes time to, to shoot locus 1002 or whatever the next locus is, might be a different team, you hit code and you just go in and change this to, you know, um, to 1002. You change that and then it would be. 0.53 to 0.70 might be locus um, 1002 and so on and so forth. So that's that's basically it. So then when it comes time to shut this thing down, um, I think that's everything. Um, once once I think that's yeah. it. So once when you to shut it down, you hit the power button, hold it down, and then hit the enter button. That's like a safety measure, so you don't accidentally turn it off um, in the middle of a job. So you hold the power button down, the enter button, and it'll turn off. So then um, I'm just going to open the box and Nikon badges up, open the box, unscrew, um, I'm going to actually make sure my plate locks are loose so it can rotate because you don't want it to be tight and then sort of force it. Um, so this is loose. The um, the, the optical plummet um, faces down in this little circle in the box. And it sits in there just like that. And then you can sort of loosely, um, loosely lock the plates so they can't flop around. You don't want to do hard, but just sort of loose. And close up the box, and you're good to go. Then, of course, you know, put the tripod away.